Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to the first episode of my blind reaction to Watership Down on Netflix. Um, so Watership Down is a classic book that is, despite being about cute little rabbits, not a cute little story. Um, I don't know too much about it. I never read the book and I never watched the original movie. Um, but this new Netflix short series, which is four episodes, each episode uh, just under an hour long, um, it, it, it's got somewhat of a good amount of attention. Um, you know, like you don't hear about it all the time, but when it first came out and stuff, like people talked about it to s some degree. <laughs> um, now. Like I said, I know very little about the full story. I just know that it's very dark and uh, adult-oriented. Um, and th this is one of those sh shows that, as a short-form series, I will probably only be, um, like, watching it. Uh, okay. I, I, I started wording that off completely wrong. As a short-form series, I will probably be watching the entire thing without issue because it's only four episodes long um it, it shouldn't be much of a problem to get through it all um and if at any point that i i do feel like i'm just like really not liking this to a degree where i really have zero interest in continuing then i will but hopefully it never gets that bad <laughs> um so yeah the animation, I believe, is done in a more 3D style as compared to, uh, like, a typical animation style, like a cartoony style. Um, and there's a lot of big-name voices in this version. Um, I believe James McAvoy is in it. Um, if, I, if I'm correct, I might be wrong about that, but I think he's in it. Um, and I don't know who else for sure, but I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, there's others that I knew of, I just can't remember who, basically. But I am interested to check it out. This was a donation reward, of course, hence why it is on Friday. And I'm hoping that it ends up being pretty darn good. So we're just going to get right into this. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so this was the first of four episodes of Watership Down on Netflix, and honestly, it was boring. <laughs> if, if I'm being completely honest, this was boring as fuck. Like, I, I wasn't invested in pretty much any of these characters, any of the stories, any of it. I, I, I didn't care. The only character I, 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 as I mentioned in the reaction, the only character I liked, and by extension the only character I really cared about, was one we've barely had anything for, with, was uh, Strawberry. Only because she actually seemed to have a character that was interesting. She seemed to have um, a personality that could invest me. Because it's like, yeah, it's like I, I get the entire thing. She's never had friends because friendship was never like done in their Warren because of you know pretty much anyone being able to go at any time. And we saw in earlier on. When, like, she had been going to tell the one uh, person, the one rabbit, about things. And it's like, oh, I, I didn't realize he's gone. And it's like, that is so depressing. And you feel so bad for her. But she's, like, the only character like that. I mean, there, like I said, there's a couple characters you can kind of be on the fence with. Some characters who you can kind of get behind a little bit more, like Hazel and Fiverr. Um, but most of the, most of them, you just don't care about, or you just hate. Like, Bigwig, I didn't, I don't like Bigwig. I actually hated him. Honestly, I, I was not upset when he, uh, well, supposedly died. 
I was actually more upset when it was revealed he survived. The entire thing about, like, okay, so clearly Fiverr's dream was that man is coming to take over the Warren and is going to, like, build something there and shit. And it's like, okay, I get it. The message of this is, you know, humanity or not humanitarian. Um, it's all about how man is fucking up the environment and shit. Uh, it's like, I, I get that. And it's like, th it's valid. But it's like, okay, you're being a little preachy with this. It felt very preachy in the way it was handled. Uh, and the way they, that they really pushed uh, everything. Um, with, concerning the vision and all of that. A lot of it, see, there were certain points that seemed to move too fast. And then most of it moved way too slow. Um, certain points that move too fast, for example, the uh, early part in the episode where it's like, okay, we're going to warn everybody. We're going to tell everybody what's going on, and then we're going to try and get out of there at a certain time. That went by so fucking fast. It felt like they should have dedicated a lot more time to that and put a lot more effort into it. Um... But the uh, uh, but most of the episode, especially a lot of the parts where they're traveling, feels so fucking slow and boring. And it's like, it, it's almost hard to watch. And I think the problem is that they are hour-long episodes. This kind of show, I feel, is not good for the, that length of episode. Something like Supernatural, yeah, you can have an episode that's like 45 minutes long. Because that kind of show is more suited for longer episodes. But a show like this would have, it would have made more sense to just do eight episodes instead of four and have them be, you know, like 20, 25 minutes long each. That way it wouldn't have felt like it was overstaying its welcome and it wouldn't have felt like uh, it was poorly paced. They probably could have just paced it better with that. But the way it was handled, it just felt like the pacing was, like, again, mostly just excessively slow. But then there's a couple scenes and stuff where it was just, like, really fast. Also, Cowslips, Warren, was so fucking rushed over. Like, I again, I, I mentioned during the pre-thoughts, I, I do not know the source material. I've never read the book or whatever. Um, but that was so obviously rushed over. That felt like it, it should have been a much bigger deal. And it, and it also felt like they, uh, they just kind of skimmed past it. And then there's the entire thing with the ending. It felt like there were like two or three different endings. It's like, okay, here's where it's going to end. And then it's like, oh, nope, all of a sudden Captain Holly, here's where it's going to end. And then, oh, nope, we're going to have this uh, enemy faction of evil rabbits with this leader who has a white eye and now it finally ends and it's like just pick an ending it's seriously it's like it's like the return of the king here we have three different endings here all of which felt like an ending and everything after the first one feeling completely unnatural if they wanted to have if they wanted to uh, to build up this evil faction that's fine but i think the way to do it would have been uh, to have the first ending not feel like an ending, obviously. Uh, maybe, like, when they get there, instead of it just, like, suddenly turning to night, maybe they find, uh, maybe that's when Captain Holly comes hopping up or hobbling up or whatever. And that's when they, uh, find out about all of that. And then it ends. And then after the credits, it shows the part with uh, the evil rabbit. And, and that part should have been a lot shorter, too. It felt like going th all throughout the burrow and stuff was unnecessary. Um, it just felt like it lasted a little too long. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, overall, I'm not impressed. Because there's a couple things that were fun about this episode. I, Bluebell is okay. Um, in terms of personality, um, again, not like, I, I, that's, that's a character who's kind of on the fence for me, but again, most of the characters I just either don't care about or don't like. 
And the only one I really like is Strawberry, and she's barely had anything to do. Also, maybe the really dark stuff happens later on because this really wasn't that dark. Like, there was a couple of dark moments, but they were very brief and not that bad at all. I just felt like this was not that great. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't that great. And honestly, I'm kind of... I'm having a hard time finding the uh, desire to continue. Because it just didn't hook me in. There are mul many, many times while watching that I was looking at the time, wondering when this was going to be over. That's not a good sign. I, I just can't find a lot of reason to want to continue reacting to this. But I'm also conflicted because at the same time, it's like, I don't want to just like give up on it for some reason. I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to think about this. Um, and, and I'll obviously let you know by next week what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to drop it or whether I'm going to continue on. I know it's only four episodes, but it's like four hour-long episodes, and, and I didn't even really like the first one that much. So it's like, do I want to subject myself to three more hours, basically, of this? That's the question I have to ask here. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this first episode of Watership Down, though, and thank you all so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles